NHL players are addicted to shooting low. Matthews has been on an absolute heater this year with 33 goals in 40 games, and I've noticed one big change from years past. He's shooting lower. Whether it's low block, five hole, or the spot everyone seems to love this year, low glove, his shot placement is noticeably hitting the bottom of the net more often. And it's not just Matthews. The NHL is addicted to shooting low shots, and I'm here to actually explain why this has happened. Shooters, grab a notebook. Intendees, while you may want to close your eyes, listen carefully. Now first, let me convince you Matthews is in fact shooting low. This is his shot location graph for this year. You might be thinking that this is pretty evenly balanced from high to low, but this includes all goals, just removing one tap in and one deflection, as I don't think those really count. Now if you think about it, it makes sense for rebounds and one-timers that you try to elevate the puck, as these are known situations where goalies already will be in the butterfly. But when we remove rebounds and one tees, see how 13 of his 18 goals are scored below the midline of the net? Now ask yourself, when you get a chance one-on-one -on -one with a goalie, what percentage of the time are you keeping the shot low? So we circle back to the why. Well, the number one reason your coach is set to shoot low in the past is for a rebound. The old pass off the pad is a staple in coaching handbooks, and while effective in some situations, this is not the main reason we're seeing an uptick in shooting low. NHL netminders are always evolving, and if they see this shot coming, they're much better at catching it or directing pucks away compared to 5-10 to 10 years ago. Shooting for a rebound now has to be done very well or disguised to work. Also, this theory holds no water when you consider the fact that players have been loving going low during shootouts. So if it isn't rebounds, what is it? Well, for one, new goaltending styles are more susceptible to low shots than in years past. Due to the recent increase in lateral passing, goalies have been trained not to commit too early, as if they preemptively go down into the butterfly and a pass is made, it's an easy goal. Now, I'm not going to go deep into the RVH and goal line extended situations in today's video, but the reason goalies do this is so they could push off and make saves against these cross crease passes. This ironically opens up short side high, but when we're not on tough angles, goalies need to keep their feet to push off for these lateral saves. Unfortunately for goalies, players are now making their adjustments in finding room 5 hole or just along the ice on goalies who are thinking too far ahead. Additionally, as we profiled in a past Instagram video, goalies are scarecrowing out and keeping their chest up to cover the corners. This is an adjustment as players have long targeted the upper corners and goalies have had enough of it. Due to this, low glove and low blocker has opened up to be exploited. Just ask Konechny, who has gone low glove over 10 times this year. So the evolution of goalie style is one reason shooting low has been profitable lately. But before I go into the main reason you should shoot low more often, please go ahead and support the channel by subscribing to Along the Ice. It means a lot to me and my brothers and will help us in producing more deep hockey analysis for you guys. Thanks. Okay, so why else has Matthews been keeping his shots low lately? It's due to basic math. Now I know most of you are thinking that the only time Matthews is pulling out a calculator is to understand how much he's piled up in his bank account, but don't think for one second that the best in the world at their craft aren't searching for any way, even if marginal, to increase their scoring rate. Let's pretend we're coming on a breakaway and want to pick top right hand corner. Even if we're a great shooter, the fact is that there are four options of what can happen. Number one, you score. Number two, you miss high. Number three, you miss wide right. And number four, if you're like me, the goalie makes the save. In terms of outcomes, you have a 25% chance of score. Of course, there are variables in every situation, but over time, this theory holds true. Now let's consider the low glove shot that's taking the league by storm. Just by removing the height component, you now have a 33% chance of scoring as you're not going to miss high unless you really suck. Then finally, let's think of five hole. You can't really miss low or wide. Either it's saved or it goes in. Plus there's that added bonus of a small chance of a rebound, of course. I'm not here saying to shoot five hole in every scenario, just saying that over a year, if you shoot lower more often, you'll have less missed nets and a higher chance of more goals. Combine this with the fact that goalies are staying tall more often, you could see why Matthews has made the adjustment. Now last year was actually a down year for Austin. Only scoring 40 was seen as a big letdown, which is crazy, but based off of his expectations, I'm sure he looked at film to find ways to be more efficient, and I can only imagine he saw McJesus time and time again exposing goalies low on his way to 65 tucks. Maybe Poppy isn't thinking of this mathematically like I explained earlier, but monkey see monkey do. 
and he's coming after that rocket, keeping the biscuit low. Now I want to hear from you guys. Who do you think is the best low shooter in the NHL today? And do you think players are shooting low more often or do you think I'm crazy? To continue the topic of shot placement, our next video we're going to do a deep dive on the five hole shot and different ways to exploit it. Please like this video and subscribe if you don't want to miss out.